knowing that when we started this, we did say our friendship is always going to come first. So it, even if Baked and, Clo pack, Baked and Co. packs up and closes the doors, um, our friendship is always going to be the number one priority. So we're just working through some of those things. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't happened often, but... Right, so you know. it's all new. Like, this whole thing is new for us. Like, it, it growing fast is, is new, and, like, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So things have to be shifted and changed, how we do things, what we say. If we say, yes, we can do this, but oh, then we've realized, no, I can't really do this. I, I need more time or whatnot. And just, you know, just, just talking out and communicating well... Welcome back to Locala Podcast. I am your host and a writer for Locala Magazine, Taylor Strickland. And here on the couch today, we have Tiffany and Christy. Thank you for coming and being here with us today, Tiffany and Christy. And before we get to their story, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you would like to hear more content from us in the future, be sure to like and subscribe. Now, Tiffany, Christy, tell me what you do here in Ocala. Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we um, own Baked & Co., mm -hmm. which is a at-home bakery right now where our goal is to have our own lo location soon. Um, we are at the Saturday market on the first and third Saturday each month, and we do weddings and lots of baked good stuff. We get, do a lot of... Um, you have you um, marketing for uh, some realtors and some physicians' offices use us to do large orders for different events that they have. Um, basically, um, we have schools that sometimes will order from us. Um, whatever you need baked, we can usually take care of and make for you. Um, we've gotten a lot busier with the Ocala markets mm -hmm. on um, Saturdays on the first and third. Um, our Instagram and social media, we try to post our menus for that. Um, and so we take pre-orders in between also. Um, so a little bit of everything. I think we've kind of... Yeah, we do a lot. I mean, it feels like a lot. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people in Ocala, they love baked goods. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> I would think most people do. I certainly love baked goods. I have a huge <laughs> sweet tooth. How did it get started, though? Um, um, well, for m I, I've done, like, cakes and things mm -hmm. for, like probably over 10 years and parties um, with a different business, um, my own, but different company. And um, I kind of wanted to get away from that because it's, it's fun and all, but it was, it's a little bit more stressful. I st we still do some cakes and everything, but not as much. I really wanted to focus on the bake, baked good side of it because that's what I really like to make and eat. So um, just I wanted to have a little bit more control over what we, what I made instead of you know, when someone orders a cake, I want like a Mario, whatever cake or Tinkerbell or something, whatever. Um, but, but, um, yeah. So, and then I, I, I knew with it being a, in having a business on my own, uh, before I could only do so much, like I had to say no to sometimes and, you know, I could only go so far with just me. Um, and I was like, I, I want to have something more. I want to have a bakery one day. That's always been a dream of mine, but I was like, how, how can I do it by myself? How can I do it by myself? And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> Tiffany, we've known each other for a long time, but then she told me that she had a dream too. So yeah, we've been <laughs> friends for, oh gosh, probably. We were actually talking like, about it the other day. We were trying to figure like out how long have we years, been friends? I think, yeah. Um, and I think we decided it's been about 16 years. Um, and I have always kind of had a job in the medical field. Um, and uh, But I've always kind of geared towards um, the business aspect of um, working in the medical field. I started out just kind of in radiology and have worked more into management. Um, and that's really kind of my strong suit and my skill set and the thing that I enjoy. Like I like numbers. I like figuring out, you know, problems and, um, and I've always loved baking and always have kind of wanted like a cafe kind of. Um, and one day we were talking and she's like, I really just want to have my own bakery one day. And I was like, me too, except she is definitely a phenomenal baker. She, I, I do believe God gifts us with, with things. Um, and, uh, that is definitely one of her giftings. Um, me, I can follow a recipe. Um, Christy, <laughs> she she brings them to life. <laughs> so we were like, well, let's just let's just do it. Yeah. So it was last. 
last August was it when we actually August started? Is, yeah, last August is when Thanks we were like, let's just do it. And so we, I signed on to the computer. We were, I think we were at your house. Yeah, we decided. Night. We're we were just hanging it. out and we're like, let's just do it. And I pulled out a computer and I pulled up the um, LLC and started filling out everything. I'm like, we're going to do it. And we uh, knew that there was an event coming up in September, the uh, Teak Lane Market, um, another local business here. And she was put, doing a market and there was applications open for vendors. And so we we're like, well, we're going to apply. And if we get in, this is the date. We'll have to have it all figured out by um, because this is the date the market is. And so I think it was like four weeks from the date yeah, that we went was. ahead and was like, let's just do it. And then we got accepted for the market. And I was like, all right, we got four weeks to put it all together. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was like <laughs> we all started working real hard to get everything ready. And it's really grown and gotten big way faster than we thought. Like I was even working part time outside of the home before, um, but I just had to, I had to sit down because I, I couldn't bake everything and do everything that we were, were, all the orders coming in and, um, and still be, be able to like be okay (laughs) and be healthy. So it's your home that all the Mm -hmm. baked goods are made out of. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Does anyone help you and your family? Um, yeah, I mean, I get help. Yeah. (laughs) Like today was a big baking day and packaging day this morning. Um, so my husband helped me a lot as far as packaging stuff because his day off is on Fridays. So I put him to work. Um, but yeah, my kids help me sometimes, but then also like we both like she'll chip in for do, to do other orders like outside of uh, like special orders that we come in that come in like last minute like can we get like a dozen cookies for tomorrow or something and um, yeah some of the smaller orders last minute orders because typically her mm-hmm. schedule is full of making sure that um, our larger events are getting done the market's coming up or there's a wedding coming up um, and some of the the more bulk um, sometimes when we have really large orders um, it's like every evening all hands on we're deck. there yeah we're all there um, <laughs> our head husbands, over our yeah, husbands kids. help us out so much um, yes. they are probably um, thankfully our biggest supporters they um, they're, they'll even go to the markets with us and they're like handing out samples yeah. or talking to people like, hey, come check out what we have, Um, which for my husband especially, he's He's not necessarily yes, not the him. social yeah. person. He's not the one out. So that's how I know. Like he's he's really in it for us. Um, out yeah. there talking They're, to people. <laughs> they they dream bigger than we dream. Like we're I think we're catching up to their dream as far for us. Like they they like have seen this thing bigger than than what we I could have thought. But now I'm catching up. I'm like okay, I let's do this. We can do we can make this way bigger than just Ocala and just anyways like. They're they're dreaming big for us, and and they're like our biggest supporters for sure. That's great. That's what yeah. they ought to do. That's what you guys should do too. <laughs> Believe in yourselves. <laughs> now, what did they think when you first uh, brought the idea to them that you were going to be doing this? I I think that they were like, why why are you waiting? Um, yeah. They were very supportive. <laughs> um, my husband was like, well, you know, it's going to be a lot of work, um, and. Uh, but he's like, I think you guys should have done it. We talked about it prior to probably in 2019, you know, mm-hmm. before um, COVID hit and everything like that. Like we had talked about it. We had even like looked at some spaces. Um, I had kind of priced out some stuff and I was like, oh, I don't think I, we could ever do this. I, for just kind of like a side thing for, for enjoyment for about a year and a half, I did like a little online boutique um, and uh, that was fun for me and like creating a website and doing all of that stuff. And then I just kind of was like, you know what, babe, I like, the online stuff is working fine. I enjoy it. It's fun to get orders and to package stuff and ship stuff to people. I'm like, but I really like want to focus on like once things calm down and everybody gets their bearings again, I really want to, you know, focus on trying to find a spot. Um, and I know Chrissy's always wanted to bake. Um, and I think we could really do it. And so he kind of had a little bit of a heads up, I think. And I don't think it was surprising to him yeah. um, when finally we were just like eating and we're like, let's just do it now. They were like gun ho. They're like, let's do it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. like I said, they're our biggest fan, our biggest supporters, biggest fans. And I think they, they believe in us more than, than we believe in ourselves sometimes. And they know like whatever we do is going to be good. So I think. <laughs> Did you two know each other prior to getting married? Or was it after that you became friends? So she, we were married. She and married. Josue were married um, prior to us meeting a year or so, and not very not long. Not very long. They were new. Soon after, like a yeah, a year after. Um, yeah, and them. my husband and I, we met as couples. Though um, yeah. my husband and I weren't married when we met. Um, we actually kind of met. The, 
a little bit of family relation. Yeah, um, we're sort of related. I mean, people always ask if we're sisters or we're not sisters, but, but I mean, we're, we're really kind of related, not. like no. sort of through marriage. Like my husband's sister husband is her husband's cousin. Cousin. Uh, it's really not that. Oh, that so, is very so, confusing. So, I, so, in laws, I guess yeah, I would yeah, say. Through yeah. marriage, like through yeah. cousin in marriage. <laughs> there's some third time. To- there's some three times removed <laughs> in there. So yeah. A, yeah. A, a term for it. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I don't. So that's we we um met. I think we were moving a group of friends maybe in a, another couple into an apartment. I'm not really sure exactly. We were trying to think, how did we, when was like the first I feel time like we've always been friends. So. I know. And I'm like, I don't know. It's like, you've always been there. <laughs> Even though she, I like, you know, we, we didn't meet until we were young. Yeah. I mean, we were adults, but we were yeah. young adults. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of just like a instant mm-hmm. bond that we had. Like we're very similar in many ways, like our yeah. raising and, but then we're also very different personality yeah. wise. So we have some of the same experiences to lean on. But then um, I always tell people she's she's the gentle, kind, genuine one. <laughs> and you know, I'm always team Christy no matter what. It started out kind of as a joke um, where, you know, I would just defend her when the husbands were picking on us or something. Um, but 100 percent team Christy all the way whatever she needs I'm always here to support her and so of That's course when she was like She's I really want to do this but I could never do it on my own I'm like we're gonna do it here we're I gonna am. make your dream come true <laughs> that would be cute merch a team Christy t-shirt yeah <laughs> I don't want to do that <laughs> with like little baked goods on it it could <laughs> like just be one of the baked. options <laughs> uh you said that you're similar in terms of your raising what did mm-hmm. you mean um, so we both um, grew up in families where our parents were involved in church ministry and pastors. Mm-hmm. So um, we both kind of had that. We were both raised very faith-based and church was very important and family was very important. Um, our, we just have a lot of the same core values, I think, yeah. just in life in general. Um, and the experiences of like, oh, when we moved to a, a new place and we yeah, went to a new church, church or, oh, we went to, to you know, church camps. All the and kids' some, church songs. Like, yeah. Our husbands look at us like we have the three heads when we like, somebody will say something and it'll trigger like a old kids' church song or something. And we just start singing this random like children's song. And they're like, oh, gosh. I'm like, you chose us. <laughs> oh, can they not relate? <laughs> well, both of them are Puerto Rican mm-hmm. and they did not have grow up in church they grew up in church but not in churches with like kids church sort of I guess you would say so they didn't know yeah. all the songs and the, they didn't have the same exact experience I understand us. what you mean the Protestant the myriad Protestant variations that exist in uh, North America very different yeah <laughs> very very different in terms of culture I get what you mean yeah. um so you said that you also have differences, and we know that Christy's more of the shy one. How would you describe yours? Oh, Christy, oh, how would you describe <laughs> Tiffany? <laughs> she is definitely <laughs> gifted with the business side of things, but also she's very good with words, and like God definitely uses her and gifts her um, through writing and uh just even even like on our posts, like she she's excellent at our all of our Instagram and social media stuff because she's so good with words. Like for me, it takes me like twenty minutes to come up with just like a one little sentence thing to like tag, you know, to to um to to explain what a picture or video is being posted. So that's definitely something. Um, and she she's also also one thing that I love about her. She always notices people and notices some like. When you're having a good day or a bad day, or in like leaves little notes here and there, like I'll come home, like, come home or come, I guess to the bakery, I guess you want to call it, um, after being gone, and she has come, she's been in the house or something, doing get, getting something or picking something up, and she'll leave a little note here and there, or or just get drop off a little gift for something just because, um, like she, she's very intentional about what she does, and and. I definitely mm-hmm. pr- appreciate that. Oh, that's a sweet thought. <laughs> yeah, see, it's nice you get compliments on the couch. <laughs> see, I've been like, I'm the loud, crazy one. <laughs> no, I mean, she is louder than me, but <laughs> but that's not like, what I would Personable no. explain. Personable yeah. is a word for it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so your faith and your individual gifts, how is that reflected in your business? Well, I definitely do more of the baking side and the creative side of it. And um, she is... Does the other other side mostly focus? At least that, that's what she focuses on. Um, but yeah, our the faith part of it is a is a big big part of it for mm-hmm. us. Um, one of our little taglines is "Taste and See," uh, 
yes, it's t- talking about the original was talking about God and taste taste and see, you know, His goodness. Um, but I do want people to taste and see how good food can be. Because I mean, God gave us all these ingredients to create different things, and food can be delicious and wonderful, and and bring it all back to who he is and how he brought us together. I think our, our goal in, in our big goal, you know, to have a bakery in a place is we want it. We want people when they think of baked and co or when they eat our stuff to just feel a little bit of home wherever that is for them and feel welcomed. Um, I think a, a important thing for both of us um, is that we always meet people where they are um, and build a relationship because that's the best way to love people. I um, mean, to serve people. Um, and so, uh, it's really great being at the markets and just seeing people and being able to like provide something that people enjoy. And that maybe just for a moment, they either, I know this is probably going to sound like cliche or silly. I don't know. Just for a moment, they feel warm. Like they feel happy. They feel warm. Like when I eat a, a muffin or a scone, like it's like, Oh, this is so good. Like it just a minute to like be still and just like, mm-hmm. Enjoy life, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, just to quiet for a moment. And I think when people eat in the table, the table is always a place of vulnerability for people because we all we all have a, a need to be fed and to eat and, you know, for survival um, and to just like kind of capture that moment for a minute with kindness and, and warmth. I like know, that. that. I like that phrasing it as the table is a place of vulnerability for people. It's true. Mm -hmm. And especially baked goods, there's just something so reminiscent of that for people. I agree. Especially a nice blueberry muffin or a blueberry (laughs) scone. Um, But you said that you do more of the creative stuff. Now, I have to say, Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what's on your menu. So when you say creative, are we putting crazy ingredients in things or, or is there anything particularly unique that you guys do? Um, Not crazy ingredients so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, like tomorrow on our menu, we do have a cake that we haven't done before, a coconut blueberry cake, speaking of blueberry. (laughs) Um, But the one thing that I, my favorite thing are our dumplings, which is a whole apple or a whole peach wrapped in delicious dough. We also do strawberry seasonally. Um, But yeah, something that my... My mom taught me how to make. My mom, my grandma taught me how to make the crust. And my mom taught me how to do the whole dumpling thing. And we, I think I feel like it was my mom, mom's idea to do the whole peach dumpling. Apple dumplings are you hear about that, but mm-hmm. peach dumplings not always. Um, so some something kind of unique that you can't. I, I don't think you can get any most places. Um, um, but we we like to also experiment with our cookies and get creative with different flavors and different. Um, we've tried different things that we don't like. <laughs> we've tried different things that we love. Um, but yeah, um, we have a cookie, a monthly cookie subscription box that goes out. Like people subscribe and they go, get it at the fir- the first Saturday each month. Um, and that's where we a lot of times will test out some new stuff and new cookies and try different flavors and see what people think about them. So Very cool. Tiffany, yeah. is there ever anything that you see Christy bake that you're like, I don't know if this is going to work, Christy? <laughs> or do you usually trust <laughs> no, it's her? opposite. No. Like, oh, sometimes she... I'll be, because I have the utmost faith that whatever she <laughs> decides she's going to try to make is going, going to come. I joked about it when we were having a conversation with somebody else that it's, rarely is there a flop. Like, rarely. rarely. Like, there are have been. And usually rarely. it's when like we're like trying, she's trying something like I have no idea if this is going to work but we're going to try it um so I always have the I'm like hmm one of our popular items is our maple bacon scone Mm -hmm. and I at first I was like hey you should try a scone like with maple and bacon on it and she's like "Mm, I don't know if that's gonna work like she I was like just try it if if you make it it's gonna be delicious so just (laughs) just try it can we just try it and she's like oh I'll try it and sure enough it Came out yep. wonderfully, not because People of me, because she's able to bake well. <laughs> um, you do make the so bacon usually. <laughs> I do. Oh, yeah, I do make the bacon. Um, so, I mean, sometimes it's even our husband's ideas or somebody else yeah. would be like, oh, this sounds really good. Um, and she's like, I think I can do that. I'm like, I know you can do that. <laughs> yeah, usually my husband, he usually tells me it was his idea for everything. So. <laughs> Nice. One of um, we also try to incorporate some of um, just flavors that you wouldn't maybe have in a cookie. Like there's a popular drink um, at Christmas time 
coquito. It's a uh, like a Puerto Rican rum, or it has Puerto Rican rum and like kind of like an eggnog, um, yeah. spiked eggnog. And it's very popular with our husband's families. Their families they all so know we it, were yeah. like, let's try to make a cookie like that. So we try to take it. some of yeah. some flavors that you would normally find. Like we tried an Earl Grey cookie, which actually turned out real. I wasn't one hundred percent sure how that was going to work, yeah, um, it but it turned good. out really I loved good. It, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the creativity part of it where mm-hmm. we're like, oh, this flavor isn't usually in a cookie. Let's just try it. Or, um, we try to stick to, to the scones and things that are warm and like people would, would think, you know, put together. But, um, every now and then we try to mash up something that maybe wouldn't usually go together and see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. Can, so people can do custom orders. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, very ma'am. nice. Is there any ones that, uh, you would refer use? That like, would what? That you would mm-hmm. refuse. I know you said that you didn't really like doing cake so much. Well, certain cakes I do say no to just because mm-hmm. I know what I'm capable of making and not <laughs> what I'm capable of not making, not doing. So not a bust of someone. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I don't. I don't really do fondant. Right. Like, some things like that. Like certain things, I just know. Like, sorry, I, I I can't do that. Or or like I don't do the intricately decorated sugar cookies that are super cute. Like mm-hmm. I I just. That's not my not patience for it. So I say no to those things. Um, I, I've learned that like previous years with my with my other business. You know, I need to say be able to say no to what I can and can't do, and what I know my my capacity is and my what I'm capable of. So now I, it is fun to try new things. Be, when have someone pay you to try new things. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I want this, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've done that. never done that before. But I know I can do that. So like that kind of thing is more fun to, to me. But um, yeah, I, otherwise I. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to try things if I know what I can do, <laughs> if I'm confident We'd, in doing it. But otherwise, I yeah. I do say no to, like like I said, fondant stuff. or We try or to whatnot. make sure we put out the, the best product we can. So if it's not something that's in our wheelhouse or that we feel really confident in, right. we'll, we usually decline. And we'll, and we'll say, refer to somebody, refer to somebody else, else yeah. locally that we know, hey, they do really great at this. Um, that's mm-hmm. not really our skill set, but, but mm-hmm. they can help you out, I'm sure. So I think just to try to maintain a good product, not, Correct. not that yeah. – we're not willing to try, but we want you to have what you want, yeah. especially if you're ordering. I mean, you have an idea of what you're, you're wanting. Um, we want to make sure you're satisfied with it. And so if we don't think we're going to be able to do that, then we might say, ah. But we always try to give you another option of where to try, where to search. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's looking out for other small businesses and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. It's really wonderful. Now, you guys seem to be very in sync with each other. Okay. <laughs> like you know exactly what the other person is going to say, which is wonderful. Uh, but I know when it comes to friends and starting businesses, sometimes that can be difficult. Has uh-huh. there ever been any time you guys have faced any challenges working together? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. We definitely have. I mean, nothing that is like, oh, w- interferes with our friendship. But there are times when, because we are different mm-hmm. um, and we have never, we've always been friends, but we've never right. worked together like so closely. Um, and so it's kind of learning um, our professional communication styles and knowing that or just remembering always to give the benefit of the doubt and keep the best intentions in mind. Um, I'm I'm not ever purposely going to try to hurt her, and she's never going to purposely like say something to upset me. And just recognizing that because sometimes, I mean, especially busy weeks or busy times, we we both have families and husbands. I I work a, another job as well, um, so sometimes you know we're tired and we're busy and mm-hmm. we're. Um, Texting is usually not good during those times, like yeah. communicating, because just like We've learned that. all people and all, all friends right. and all women, probably, especially, yeah. um, you you read different tones. So it's just recognizing when that happens. Mm-hmm. And usually one of us will pick up the phone and be like, hey, mm-hmm. let's, let's talk. So that way we hear each other's voice and then we're not reading into any tones right. that, you know, I might be putting something in something that she's not saying or vice versa. Right. And it's just knowing that when we started this, we did say our friendship is always going to come first. So it, even if Baked and, Clo pack, Baked and Co. packs up and closes the doors, um, our friendship is always going to be the number one priority. So we're just working through some of those things. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't happened often, but, right. it's, you know. it's all new. Like, this whole thing is new for us. Like, and it growing fast is is new, and, like, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So things have to be shifted and changed, how we do things, what we say. If we say, yes, we can do this, but oh, then we've realized, no, I can't really do this. I, I need more time or whatnot. And just, you know, just, just talking out and communicating well and, like, like, 
in person or on the phone is, is much better than anything through written. But um, yeah, again, it's just, it's all new. So we're, we're learning too as we go and we're trying to to be careful because it is like our friendship is number one before anything else. So it's also Definitely. helpful that from what you guys said, you guys are on the come up. Things are growing real, real fast for you. Mm-hmm. And when you have all those successes, it's great. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. And trying not to like extend ourselves too much too right. soon, like mm-hmm. in realizing that, yeah, it's we're getting orders. It's, it is growing. It's becoming busier, um, but not to let it get too busy to where we burn ourselves out before we even really get started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely trying to set boundaries and um, figure out, okay, where's that happy medium of right. continuing to grow and not plateau, but not like burning ourselves out on one end or the other um, because we want it to be something that we enjoy, right. um, not something that's like cumbersome. I mean, all work at some point is cumbersome, but we want to make sure that we don't, you know, burn out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure experience <clears throat> adds a lot to that. As you said, Christy, before you were, what were your job? You were doing cakes before? Yeah, I had a, another business called Party in a Box where I did mm-hmm. cakes and parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything was custom and themed out. So it was mm-hmm. a lot. It was. A, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was a lot of work too. So I've done it for a long time, and, mm-hmm. and just obviously, you know, after. You, I, I'm pretty. I feel like I'm pretty quick at when I when I bake and do different things. But because um, I'm in the kitchen all the time, <laughs> but, it also it prepares you realistically. And then for you, Tiffany, you said that you were still employed elsewhere. Where mm-hmm. is that? So I work at a medical practice here um, in Ocala. So um, that does take up the the majorities of my day times. Mm-hmm. Um, so I find myself baked and co is usually a evening thing. Whether um, I'm trying. To, I, I've gotten better about scheduling some posts um, because trying to be a mom and a wife and, uh, you know, work my my full-time job and be as available as I can for Christy um, and in the markets on the first and third weekends, um, it's just – a lot. So you kind of have to time management and fit in, in in your little pockets of time, do as much as you can. Um, so, But medicine, even the business sort of things, I know it can be tough. So I'm sure that this is a wonderful creative outlet for you. It really is. It has been um, It has been nice. It's, it's allowed me, even though it's work and it's busy, I tell her all the time because she's like, well, I know you're busy. And you, I'm like, this is, it doesn't feel like work mm-hmm. to me. Um, work feels like work. I enjoy my job, <laughs> but work feels like work. This feels like, you know, it's, it's a past, a pastime. It's something I'm enjoying. Like, I don't feel ours. like I'm, like It's different when it's like your own thing, you know? Yeah. It's not like you're working for somebody else kind of thing. Which is fine, <laughs> but <laughs> but when you have your own thing, you can start. It it feels different. So yeah. that's beautiful. So, what products and services do you guys like? What's the extent of them? So our markets generally consist of um, breakfast baked stuff. We have muffins, scones, dumplings is definitely one of our very popular things, and probably um, one of the things in our head that we're like we kind of want to be known for that. Yes, I want to be known um, for. <laughs> so uh, we do cake pops, um, cookies. Co- cookies are becoming pretty cookies, popular too. We weren't like expecting pretty that, popular. But... They're pretty good size, so people like like them because of their size. Mm-hmm. I think too. Mm-hmm. They're also good. So. <laughs> we do um, bricks, which are like, think a brownie, but a very large brownie. Um, so we do different flavors. So we've we've termed them bricks so that we can <laughs> encompass all of the flavors because they're they're you fairly large. They're very thing, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do our, our regular brownie bricks. We have different flavors. Our, our coffee brick and our coffee cookie are, are popular. Um, and then, of course, cakes and cupcakes mm-hmm. and cake pops and... Yeah. Pretty much, um, that's, yeah. That's basically yes. our, what our Saturday menu would n- normally be. Those seven different types of things. Mm-hmm. So our cake slices are becoming more popular. We, yeah. we started instead of because we do enjoy cakes, um, themed cakes. She's very good at themed cakes. That's yeah, kind I, of I what do, she I was trying to get away from. I still do it. But um, not she still as gets often. some orders, yeah. but just cakes in general. Um, and so our giant cake slices have become kind of popular at the markets, too. Yeah. So you can order whole cakes in between. Um, cakes in a jar usually... to go. Kind yeah. of thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Cakes in a jar. I've yeah, seen that little, on Pinterest. A little, like, yeah. mason jar cake. So you just take it yeah. and eat it. That's adorable. Yeah. But, Christy, you want to be Christy the scone master. That's really what you want to push. <laughs> Listen, I will. scone and the dumplings. Dumplings, yes. dumplings, dumplings. Scones and dumplings. Listen, <laughs> I will spread the gospel of scones. I love them. I think okay. they're superior. But dumplings, I've actually never heard of that before. Is it a southern thing? I don't know. I don't know if it. 
I tell so people to kind of think think of like a cobbler, but in like whole form. Yeah, it's kind like. of a pie. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole apple, whole peach wrapped in what I the best part is the the, the crust, the, the dough. dough. And then it has like a delicious like syrupy stuff that is cooked in. So that is very cool. You said you yeah. learned that from your mother and your grandmother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, very neat. Where yeah. are they from? Um, my grandma was mostly. She lives. Well, she lives in Texas now, but she most of her life she lived in Illinois. And my mm-hmm. gra- my mom was raised in Illinois too. But we've growing up and living as my mom was older, she was lived different places. So we've. Yeah, I don't know that it's a. I don't know if it's a southern thing or not. Like it was, we lived in the Midwest most of my growing up. So, hmm. what yeah. about you, Tiffany? So as far as where I yeah. I was born, actually in Maryland. My parents um, were born and raised in Maryland, um, but we moved here when I was very young to Ocala, mm-hmm. actually. And then with um, mom being in ministry, we moved. Um, to South Georgia for a while and then back to Tampa. So I've most of my life I've been kind of in Georgia or Florida, um, whether it was South Florida. Um, we transferred my senior year, I think we moved to Tampa. Um, I wasn't, <laughs> Tampa's great, I'm sure. <laughs> my personal preference was not Tampa. <laughs> Um, not to offend anybody, no. Um, but I moved back here because we had a lot of family here. Um, I graduated early and moved back here. I loved my parents, but I was like, I got to get out of Tampa. And then shortly after, they relocated back here, too. So um, that's kind of been where I was. We both lived in South Georgia for a short time, not far from each other, around the same time. Um, yeah. We didn't know each other then, but yeah. in kind of talking about our history, she was Doug. Douglas, Douglas, Georgia. Yeah, she was in Douglas, Georgia for a while while I was in Cairo, which is a tiny little town, um, a little east of Thomasville, Georgia. So um, yeah. pretty similar stories. Yeah. It's a good yeah. thing you guys found each other, yeah. you know, outside of I the know. bakery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the dumpling thing? The dumpling? Yeah. No. So she actually, so she. my favorite thing that she makes is the peach dumpling. Like if That's I'm going. Favorite, and the strawberries. If, if I'm Good requesting too. anything from Chrissy, even like like some people, she'll make like a birthday cake for our friends' birthdays or things like that. And I'm like, just make me some peach dumpling and I will be happy. Um, I do enjoy the scones now. Um, those are one of my favorites. And um, But the peach dumpling is my favorite thing. I love it with vanilla ice cream on it. Um, but I never like cobbler. Yeah, I've had peach cobbler, um, apple, stuff like that. Peach cobbler in South Georgia. There was a little lady in our church who made a delicious peach cobbler. So uh, it wasn't a completely foreign concept to me, but the fact that it was a whole peach wrapped in this like delicious sweet dough, I was like, you could just almost wrap the dough like and put some some of the you juice don't, you in don't it. Even need the fruit. I, you don't even need the fruit. Just leave the fruit out. <laughs> that sounds like me. I gotta try one of these dumplings though. That was pretty cool. Yes. Where? Um, so you said like if I wanted to go get one, where would I find it again at the, at the markets? Yeah, we're at uh-huh. the Saturday market on the first and third Saturday each month. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you you can do orders as well between the markets mm-hmm. uh, if you want. We do have minimum quantities just because certain things mm-hmm. uh, we can't make a single at, uh, order. Um, we do have uh, things available at the workspace as well. Um, Your house? Fort King. No, the, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, workspace. <laughs> the workspace collective on Fort collective, King. Yes. Um, um, we have we have uh, things available there during the week. We don't always have dump. We don't have dumplings there typically, but we have other items throughout the week. So okay, very cool. And for those people who don't know what the first Saturday market is, where would that be? So downtown Ocala, um, under the pavilion that is uh, kind of across from the water tower, across from, is that the CEP that's right there? I should know this. Um, Right there along the O track. (laughs) I know. So um, the downtown pavilion, every Saturday from 9 to 2, they have vendors that are there every Saturday. So if if you're free on a Saturday, go down and check out the market. There's lots of great vendors there. Um, But the downtown market on the 1st and 3rd is where we are. So it's right there. Um, I'm in the middle of downtown. Um, you can park at the parking garage and walk up kind of towards Citizen Circle um, to find us. Um, we're on the sidewalk next to the O-Track. We're not actually under the pavilion. Yes. Okay. So, mm-hmm. And what um, – do you guys have like a little tent set up where people yeah. can go? Do. And is that the only place uh, they can do pickups, that other than the workspace? So we do have um, a couple other places that if they order in between markets, we can utilize as a pickup location. So you can't just go in and, and get something from there. It's not there. Um, but if you do pre-orders or you pre-order in between, um, 
by Sydney Boutique on Baseline, Mm -hmm. um, by Sydney Lease Boutique. She is a pickup location for us. So if you do an order, um, we can drop it off there for pickup during her business hours. And then also Karishma Boutique that is over kind of off of Easy Street, kind Mm -hmm. of behind the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Um, She's also a pickup location for us. Very cool. And where would they order if they wanted to? They can order online. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a a website and we also have our social media, our Instagram, at Baked and Co. FL. Um, They can put orders in through social media um, or the website. Email us at eat at baked and co. FL dot com. And there's a, we have a, um, our little business cards have a QR code on them. So (laughs) very cool. Now, what's next for you guys? Oh boy, what's next? <laughs> um, well, vacation for Christy. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are hoping, um, we're looking at some spaces, um, not ready to move into any place right now, um, but we're just trying to get an idea for space and location and cost um, to kind of go from in home to an actual brick and mortar. Um, Every Saturday at the market, people are like, where are you guys located? And we're like, we don't have a place yet, um, but it's coming, um, Lord willing, and um, if staying on track like we are. um, So we... We originally thought maybe we would do like a little truck um, prior to, but yeah. I think we kind of are, are skipping that, skip that. Um, yeah. because we just we need more space. We have we have all of the stuff that we need other than a, mm-hmm. a location. Um, we have our commercial oven, Big a commercial oven. mixer, <laughs> um, plenty of freezers <laughs> and fridges. Um, so it's just really finding that that space and figuring out when, when is the time to make that transition. Mm-hmm. Um, so for now, we're baking away at the markets, um, filling up the workspace collective as much as we can um, for people to drop by and grab stuff um, and just seeing where where that takes us and where God opens the next door, I guess. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, you, once you guys get your space, because I have no doubt that you eventually will, you'll have to let us know. I promise I'll be one of the first customers. <laughs> yeah. Thank you both so much for coming Thank and sitting us. here and talking with us about your business and your story today. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone else, for joining us today on the Locala Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Taylor Strickland. And I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to try to memorize all of the different links and places that (laughs) Tiffany and Christy gave us to find all their goods. That will all be posted in the description. And you can also find further information about this podcast and the episode itself at LocalMag.com. Thank you for joining us. Locale Podcast. I'm Taylor Strickland once again. Bye.